Welcome back guys. Uh, in this video tutorial, we'll be talking about uh, the sequencing method called Maxim Gilbert method. So I'm using an image which is a beautiful illustration of how Maxim Gilbert process works. And actually I am taking uh, this uh, from the biochemistry book and I'm, I'll be referring to that and I'll put the link in below for uh, the understanding. So let's talk about the Maxim Gilbert method of DNA synthesis and DNA sequencing. Maxim Gilbert uh, method is described based on the name and of the discoverer who are the two scientists Maxim and Gilbert. And the thing is uh, the sequencing method of Maxim Gilbert based on the very basic understanding which is called the chemical chemical sequencing because this sequencing methods rely on the chemical synthesis process because the thing is let's say this is uh, the strand or the DNA sequence that we need to sequence right we don't know the sequence we have a DNA strand unknown sequence and we can sequence that DNA by using some chemical termination processes so let's talk about uh, what we mean by that chemical processes in much more detail here sorry let me break it down smaller yeah okay that will be good okay so let's begin with the sample DNA so we have the sample DNA and what you prepare here we pre we need to prepare a homogeneous single stranded DNA from that sample DNA because sample DNA is double stranded and we don't want double stranded DNA for our reaction we want homogeneous single stranded DNA and we are just preparing it from our double stranded DNA and preparation of a homogeneous single stranded DNA is pretty easy because it is a one strand structure of that DNA because we know DNA has a complementarity nature that means if we have a one DNA strand structure we can ultimately guess the other of other complementary DNA structure pretty easily based on the Watson Crick pairing that is A pairs with T and G pairs with C right so here what we can see that this is the homogeneous strand that we get here right so once we get the homogeneous single stranded DNA then what we do we add a phosphate group and this phosphate is radio labeled this is radio labeled that's why it's called P32 it's a very common type of radioisotope for phosphorus that is that that is widely used in biological processes so we add it into the 5 prime phosphate of that DNA so once we add that that 5 prime phosphate this 5 prime phosphate to this single stranded homogeneous DNA that we just prepared we are ready to go with our reaction now this is the preparatory phase for this Maxim Gilbert reaction once we prepare our DNA by tagging it with radio label phosphorus at the 5 prime end now we start the, ma the major process for Maxim Gilbert and that is the chemical remember chemical termination chemical termination process now that means what we have we have this sequence and we need to find what what uh, this sequence is all about now remember we don't know actually in this case for our understanding we are drawing the sequence we know the sequence and I'm just showing you how to do that but the thing is actually in reality we never know this sequence that's why we are sequencing it right so it will work uh, by the formula that we are going to study now now let's say in Maxim Gilbert process the idea is to add certain chemical agents which will degrade and cleave certain bases out of the DNA for example if this is a single stranded uh, DNA now if we add the chemical called DMS or dimethyl sulfate followed by piperidine both are the chemical agents if we add those two things one after another it will cleave guanine out of this DNA strand okay so that is called the G reaction and that reaction should be carried on in one particular test tube that is called the G test tube right or test tube number one so let's say G test tube in the G test tube we just add DMS followed by piperidine and we know that whatever sequences are there in unknown DNA it is going to cut guanine out of it so if it is cleave, cleaving the guanine out it will make break in the DNA right because how many number of times the guanine is present it will create that number of breaks for example in this case there are two guanines present so they are going to produce two breaks in the DNA ultimately leading to the generation of three strands and that's what is going on here right so it is a test tube number one or 
guanine test tube. Now in the test tube number 2, we have added other chemicals which will cleave adenine out of the DNA and some amount of guanine I mean whatever time they are getting adenine they will cleave the DNA but only in certain cases they can also cleave guanine out that is called A plus G test tube right so that is called A plus G test tube there in the A plus G test tube we have that chemical I am not going to talk about the name of chemicals and how they degraded but the idea is to cleave a particular base out of the scenario so in the first one we have guanine out in the second one we have adenine plus guanine it means adenine definitely but they will cleave guanine occasionally okay so if you look at here in this image I mean this is adenine placed at the terminal so no way of cleaving it now another adenine at the bottom so one cleavage another here so two so due to the presence of adenine twice actually thrice but uh, one in the terminal so it won't cleave anything it won't change anything but presence of adenine uh, here twice so it will actually cleave the DNA three times so we'll get three cleaves, cleavages for adenine and if there are guanine present one and two twice so two cleavage for the guanine so what we get here is that it that uh, five so three for the adenine and two for the guanine so five cleaved DNA strands and that's what we are getting here in the second test tube. Now in the third test tube we'll add certain chemical which will break down thyros uh, thymine out of the place sorry so it will break the thymine out of the place so as the thymine is cleaved out and occasionally it can also cleave out cysteine so, in, uh, so cytosine sorry I just <laughs> uh, so it will cleave thymine and uh, cytosine uh, keep on repeating cysteine there <laughs> so uh, thymine and cytosine these two bases are there now the chemical that we place it will cleave thymine and cytosine out of the place right so so here as you can see here in this in this reaction how many thymines are there one two three four so as a result what it will uh, the number of cleave uh, the cleaved DNA they are going to generate here due to the presence of thymine are 4 and for the presence of cytosine it will be 1 2 so 2 so it will be ultimately 2 and so actually actually how many number of times it is going to cleave as you can see here it can cleave from this time in so it can generate 1 from this time in so 2 from this time in 3 4 5 6 6 for the time in itself and for the for the cytosine it can be twice so uh, ultimately eight cleaved DNA can be produced from this so how many number of combinations is possible you can just telling uh, you can just tell it by looking at this DNA structure so eight times now and the last one we are certain chemical which is only cleaving the cytosine out of it right so cytosine will be cleaved so the fourth test tube is cytosine test tube so there are four test tube the idea is we will be putting in each test tube certain chemical which are selectively cleaving a particular nucleotide out of the DNA and as it is cleaving that nucleotide out of the DNA ultimately DNA is broken down into fragments and we will get number of fragments from each test tube now so once we produced all these different fragments from our DNA of interest now this last thing is to run the electrophoresis and look at the data because after running the electrophoresis we will go for the radioactivity I mean radiography with the radiography we can tell the position of each bands how because we just mark them with P32 because P32 is a radio labeled isotope as a result of that in audio radiogram we can see the presence of each bands uh, and easily we can interpret the result so once we get it once you understand this thing so I need to rub this because uh, yeah so let's scroll it down a little bit here we go and let's take another color let's take no take blue let's take red so here we go so we have this four test tube remember one is for entirely G one is for A adenine plus guanine another one is for the thymine plus cytosine and the last one is for the cytosine itself so four test tube destined for four different types of combinations so now what we can look after that we load the gel 
right remember in each test tube we can run only one well of the gel we cannot mix them because if we mix them it will completely destroy the experiment right so it's very very important uh, so that's kind of disadvantage for this type of experiments because we need to run four different setup continuously from the beginning of the experiment so then we load them into the well after loading them into the well what we'll check we do the electrophoresis so after the electrophoresis we do the radiography auto radiography is done now radiography uh, plate is there now from this plate we can identify certain things now how can we identify let's see here so this is the band pattern that we form now remember when in each tube we not only get uh, the breakdown product but also we can get some of the products some of the mm, i mean uh, dna strands which are not broken we also add that for a marker so that we can understand that whether the process occurred correctly or not so in all of uh, this result on gel electrophoresis plate or radiogram plate we can see the presence of one band common to all of them and that is the total length of base pair remember whatever we are talking about the number of nucleotide in the base pair is 12 so it's a 12 nucleotide long long sequence we need to deduct it's very small but for the experimental purpose and for the understanding we're taking it very small but actually in real life uh, this maxim gilbert sequencing uh, used to uh, produce 200 to 400 nucleotide sequence at the same time and it can be done but it is though it is not enough because for human genome it is a billion uh, base pair long so in that case we require something more advanced that's why we move on towards the advanced techniques and also next generation sequencing techniques so if you look at here that in all of them we have the 12 uh, nucleotide long uh, the major the single nucleot dna sequence that need to be sequenced but rest of that band so that band is common to all uh, i don't need to bother about that anymore now to find out the sequence now let's look at here now then 11 so here comes the length of the bases in this particular lane actually so you can also run the the ladder uh, sequence there so that you can find uh, the reference for the length so the length for the 11 uh, number 11 nucleotides we can have two bands here we are having two bands one for uh, the c and one other for, for t plus c that means here in this particular 11 stretch nucleotide sequence we have it is it is uh, when we terminate c we have the 11 when we terminate both t and c we also have the 11 from the 12 right remember 12 is uh, the actual one so we have 12 nucleotide long now we are pro getting 11 so one is released so if we cleave c out intentionally we get 11 nucleotide long if we get t and c both out still we get 11 nucleotide long what does that mean that means c is common for both of them that means the nucleotide we cut out is definitely c not t because if it is t then it will reflect differently in the next tube try to understand this is the most important part for interpreting the result because C is common in both the case and if we cut C out as a result in both the cases we get 11 nucleotide lock only one nucleotide out though we treat it for T and C both right that means the first one will be C now if we look at here the next one the 10 nucleotide long now we are going for 10 nucleotide long in the 10 nucleotide long region what we get here is one for c one for t and c so same thing again so if we block c if we cleave c out we get 10 nucleotide long sequence if we block t and c both out we also get 10 nucleotide long so again c is common for both of them no other bands that means again it will be c the third one is the nine base pair long so now nine so nine base pair we can find one at g another one for a plus g what does that mean that means from the 12 nucleotide long dna if we cut the g out only we get a nine nucleotide base right if we cut for a and g both still we are getting nine nucleotide that means again in both of these test tubes the common element to be cut out is g and the result is same so the position is occupied by g right now the eighth so from 12 now we get eight nucleotide long sequence 
and the band we get only one band at A plus G right that means we get so if we add the chemical which will eliminate A and G out of the place we get 8 nucleotide long right now if we look at the G only in the G there is no band that means if it is if it's supposed to be G in that case we should get a band in the G right because if we cleave this 12 nucleotide with only G out we should also get this band if it is A plus G we are getting the band right that means if, if that's why we are not getting any band in G but in A G that means the uncommon thing here is A so it will be A after that same thing occurs we get a band in T plus C but not in C that means the sequence is T again we get a band in T plus C but not in C so again it will be T then again we are getting a band in T plus C as well as in C that means the sequence is C so remember the easiest way to understand is that if you get bands same bands both in T plus C and C in that case the common one is the sequence if you are getting only one band for A plus G but not in A or not in G in that case the uncommon one is the sequence so that's how you need to understand for example again here we get the sequence for A plus G but not for G that means the sequence definitely is G sorry A definitely is A because you're not getting any in the G right right now again if you look at here we are getting sequence in G as well as A plus G that means it will be G so so on we can actually get the sequence from it so we can see here the sequence C C G A T T so actually we are getting the sequence at the end so that's how Maxim Gilbert sequencing actually work right so compare with it with A plus G with G if we get band in both the sequence definitely is the common one which is G if we compare it if we find it only for A but not for A plus G sorry say let's say if we're getting the sequence for for say for say A plus G but not for G in that case the sequence will be A so this is the actual funda if sequence is present in both the common one is the sequence if the band is present only in the double one but not in the single one the uncommon one is the sequence okay so that's the Mac Maxim Gilbert process it's this kind will be a little bit complicated but if you understand uh, this and go back you can rewind this video and watch it it will be pretty easy and this whole picture is taken from the biochemistry second edition from Matthews and Van Hold, uh, the Benjamin Cummings publication the copyright goes to the actual producers and developers of this content it is extremely helpful and a beautiful picture to illustrate so that's it guys and I hope that's helpful thank you